Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me for our weekly COVID-19 update. I'm your County Executive Ed Day. Uh, first things, let's start off by updating you on the numbers, which have been of concern, obviously, to all of us. Uh, at the end of the day yesterday, there were 672 active COVID-19 cases here in Rockland. The number is up from 382 active cases that we had last week, and that is a significant increase. Um, for clarity, our active case numbers are based on confirmed positive results dated within the last two weeks, and that has been reported to the Rockland County Department of Health. So those, the, a number on that, um, a number in there is in there for two weeks. It goes in, it's in there for two weeks, and it goes out. So it's a first in, first out uh, scenario. Please keep in mind that this denotes that there's an, an active case means the person is testing positive. It does not mean the person is, is overtly ill. It doesn't mean they're sym symptomatic. Uh, the number of people who are symptomatic is not something that is tracked either locally or by New York State. We just track the positive results. Uh, and that's important because of contact tracing, obviously, you, you could still spread the virus without being symptomatic. So the focus needs to be on positive cases. And again, it can be a it causes a little added concern because, again, we're not even talking about someone who may be ill, but it just shows an understanding of that. Um, it's concerning that we have had an increase in the number of cases uh, through Rockland and significantly increased within two zip codes in the town of Rampo, 10952 in Muncie and 10977 in Spring Valley. Uh, however, there are cases in every community in Rockland, and this should serve as a reminder to all residents that need to stay at least six feet apart from each other wear a face covering and uh, practice social distancing uh, when you're there. Um, the social distancing should be practiced uh, in combination with everyday preventative actions, including wearing masks, avoiding touching your face with your unwashed hands, especially your eyes. Staying home when you're sick. Don't go to work and get others sick, especially if you have any kind of symptoms that could be related to COVID. Uh, frequently washing your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds or using a hand sanitizer that's 60% alcohol, uh, that would get the job done. Again, some of these things are common sense, personal hygiene habits that we should be uh, engaged in. Uh, hospitalization numbers also we look at as a, as a good benchmark also. They are sl up slightly. Today we have 15 people hospitalized and confirmed positive for COVID and seven people who are hospitalized and are under investigation to see if they do have COVID. Thankfully, and this is a matter of assurance to all, our hospitals have plenty of bed capacity. When we say 15 hospitalizations, we harken back to the day where we were filled when we had nearly 400 people in the hospital. So we are in good shape in that area. We're still well beyond the limits that have been imposed by the governor for the reopening, so we're in good shape there. Um, I invite you to check these numbers out for yourself uh, daily. They're updated daily during the week. Uh, active case map typically is updated Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, when you visit rocklandgov.com, Rockland that's rocklandgov.com, you will see a link to the dash, dashboard hub page uh, that has our map, our unpause, and early warning dashboards in one place. Very simple for you to keep up with the information that we're conveying to you here. Uh, there are also links to the trackers created by New York State and the John, John Hopkins University. Now, before we address your questions, I want to share with you what we are continuing um, to have daily conversations with the governor's office, local officials, community, and religious leaders about the situation. We are taking this very seriously and taking every action that, that we can to address the problem immediately, as quickly as we can. On a call yesterday, we discussed uh, New York deploying 200 rapid testing machine, machines to sites around the state, including Rockland. That was a call that we put together with the governor's office, uh, with our uh, 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 town of Rampo uh, superintendent, uh, supervisor rather, and his staff. Um, we had the Department of Health on the phone. Uh, we had Good Samaritan Hospital on the phone. So we, we had a very good uh, uh, conversation there. Um, we know that some of these uh, test te testing facilities um, or test machines have arrived already, along with additional testing kits for our local providers. And what this means is that we'll be testing many more people in the coming days and weeks so we can pinpoint who is sick, determine, uh, determine who they may have been exposed to, and when they will be quarantined to protect the health of our community and prevent further spread. So it's, it, the, 
negative piece of this is when you test more, and as the governor has said, you're going to have higher numbers of positive tests. That's just a mathematical reality in this particular situation with a virus. But we have to do that. So what I would ask people to counterbalance a bit, uh, increase in numbers, especially when they're attributed to increased testing. I think we had 1,811 tests uh, yesterday. It's a lot of tests that were done. And we were at a 3.6 infection rate, which has not, is not a good number, but it's a lot better than it had been for the past few days. So we're seeing some, some improvement already. So um, just understand that's going to happen because in order for us to interrupt the virus through contact traces, we have to identify as many people as we know who, is test who are testing positive. Um, but increased testing is only part of the solution. The governor said today we need compliance and we need enforcement of the governor's executive orders. That is critically important. For my part, I have both been privately and publicly urging local municipalities to utilize their employees, such as building and fire inspectors and police and educational efforts. Now, this is something that we laid out, I laid out with the supervisors, the five town supervisors and 19 mayors to, to ensure that uh, businesses who were opening up did file their affirmations, did have paperwork on, 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 the, uh, on premises as required. When they looked into the businesses, they would see that the general plan they laid out was actually being complied with I mean, you, by, by looking at them visually. So this is something that should have been, been done already. And uh, right now it's the time that we, we redouble those efforts. My expectation to be very clear is that appropriate enforcement action will be taken as necessary. Now that can come in the form of the building of fire code violations, come in the form of summonses for violating the governor's orders. Those summonses, again, can only be issued by the local police. I can't make that any more clear. Health department inspectors do not have the authority nor the power to do that. Uh, this has been done in the past in Spring Valley and in the town of Clarkstown. In both cases, in Spring Valley, we, they went out and they actually shut down a location. It was Bingo, I believe, was the name of the location. They shut Bingo down, I think, for a day. Um, town of Clarkstown was bounced at a couple of other locations that we actually accompanied uh, inspectors, our health department did, to assist in, in logistical support. Um, I've been long urging the governor to directly engage with the Orthodox Jewish community in this situation with whom he has a relationship with. And today I was informed that he was doing so, and I'm glad to see that's happening because that is critically important. He is the highest elected official in the state. Uh, he has a good relationship, as I had mentioned earlier, with, with the Orthodox Jewish community. And in, uh, in my view, and also I share that same concern that was expressed by uh, Super, uh, County Executive Newhouse uh, in Orange County, uh, that he engaged directly. It's great to see that he's going to be doing that. Additionally, our Department of Health will also continue to provide educational materials and guidance to locations about which, about which we receive the complaints. The goal here is simple compliance. We have seen that the wearing of masks, washing your hands, and maintaining social distancing will significantly slow the spread of this, this disease. And implore, I am imploring all of our residents to comply with these common sense precautions. This virus is here and we have to stay in front of it. Now, during the, government, the governor's latest press conference this morning, um, he contended that the situation was caused, the situation in Rockland, as you call, called it, uh, this situation is not a, a, an entirety of a county situation, it's a two zip code situation. But he said that it was lack of compliance because local government failed to do its compliance job. To be very clear, to everybody listening to this. The local government responsible for this type of enforcement and compliance here is either a town or a village, not a county. I would like to hope the governor will be a little better at defining things instead of causing a number of issues here locally and exactly what is and exactly what is not. Um, as I've stated many times over the past few months, it is specifically law enforcement agencies that are empowered by the governor to enforce enforce his executive emergency orders. Rockland, unlike Nassau County, for example, which was me mentioned during the broadcast earlier, does not have a county police department. We have a sheriff's department, which is independent, independent constitu constitutionally uh, created uh, uh, department. That's why I was happy to hear from the town of Rampo today, to be very frank. They have not only had their code enforcement officials involved in compliance efforts, but also the Rampo Police Department. I believe this was covered uh, by local media, so you should be able to see some visual proof this is occurring. Um, uh, they have informed us that this is something we have met with the town of Rampo, because again, we're trying to work together here.
They are stepping up their education and compliance efforts through the in-person efforts of the code officials and the police department and have distributed 50,000 flyers and are putting posters in stores within the town. I want to be clear also, we have met with and talked to a number of community leaders and also a number of religious leaders. Um, they are on board, and the problem they are having, to be frank, is they are what they call certain outliers in certain areas where they just are not getting it. And it takes a lot of work for everybody to the same page here. So I just want to be clear with that. We're not running into obstacles when it comes to religious leaders in Rampo. They are working with us here. It's a matter of getting all of them to work with us, and that is a challenge for everybody concerned. Uh, we in government must continue to focus our energies on ensuring residents follow common sense precautions that limit the spread of this deadly disease. We in county government will continue to work with all our other levels of government, uh, local community, and re religious leaders in order to get this message across. We are working to avoid a shutdown, and the governor and his staff have all said that they did not want to see this happen. And it should not, and it should not uh, be as the issue is not a bar, it is not a restaurant, it is not a bowling alley. These facts, these facts are by and large been overall compliance as witnessed by the fact that 19 of our 26 zip codes have eight or fewer current cases. Compare that to the two zip codes I mentioned with 477 positive cases. That is an astounding 71% of our county's total positive cases. In short, the issue that is in front of us has been clearly and definitively re identified. It gives us an opportunity to address it because it is a tight scenario. But uh, it would uh, to punish our local small businesses with, would be an absolute atrocity of ep epic proportions because they are doing the right thing. These are our neighbors. They should not be punished because other people are not doing the right thing. So we're working on that. Uh, but that said, this is not the time for complacency. These are the issues that can happen if we don't continue to practice common sense uh, personal hygienic habits. Now, we'll, uh, we're getting to some questions. I'm going to turn it over to John Lyon, our Director of Communications. John, can we, let's get a few questions out of the way. Sure thing. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone, who wrote in today. We got a lot of questions. There's a lot of Great. conversation locally about what's going on. Um, there were, most people wrote in, there were a lot of duplicates of some yeah. questions. So a few people wrote in about what's going on in schools, both public and private, and on school buses. Uh, what's being done? Who makes these decisions about virtual or in-person learning? There's just a lot of concerns right. of people who have children. Right? Yeah, I've gotten a number of emails and Facebook posts on that also, and, and I understand, that, you know, obviously, my, my, my young ones are no longer young, but well, they're younger than me, but I'm not, uh, I'm not dealing with the PTA anymore. So, um, but I understand that there's a, there's a bifurcation as to where the responsibilities may align. Hopefully, we can help you out here. Um, each and every school district uh, or private school has created their own reopening plan and submitted directly to New York State. So we don't even see that. Okay, this goes, well, neither does the town, neither does the village. So it goes directly to state. And these plans differ by district and often by individual schools. But they have to be submitted and approved, uh, submitted by the school, school district, and approved by the state. Uh, we were also informed that one of our calls, one of our calls with the town of Rampo, that the private schools within their town are stepping up their compliance with mass requirements. We got, I got a number of messages myself in video uh, showing children in school buses without masks. Obviously, that's a problem. Um, we are repeating the same message. You must wear a mask when unable to social distance, particularly within an environment like a bus or a school where people are in close quarters. Obviously, a school bus would qualify a need to have a face covering. Okay. It's Coincidentally, um, I actually had to a conversation with staff members of the new East Rampo School District uh, Superintendent, uh, Dr. Raymond Giamartino, uh, the interim superintendent, regarding the number of issues, and that happened to include school buses because uh, there were some concerns about what was going on in East Ram in, in Rampo, obviously, the impact upon the schools, so they called my office to get some sense of it. So we went over some of the numbers, and I actually brought up to, uh, to his staff that one of the concerns I've been getting mostly is what I'm hearing from many of you is a concern about school buses. Um, and I said probably the most important thing I can share with you, because most of the decisions made uh, as a school superintendent is going to be building related, you know, what, you know, uh, what the hours, uh, whether they're going to be hybrid learning. There's a lot that goes on within the school system, obviously. But 
the issues that we're dealing with are similar but quite different. I said the one thing that I will tell you is that we get a lot of calls about the buses, and he actually, uh, they actually said to me they had a memo go out um, not long ago basically saying the same thing, that children it must have mask in the school uh, when they get in the school bus um, so uh, interestingly enough I, I believe East Bravo is starting live instruction next week if I heard it correctly so they're gonna resend that memo out and my recommendation was very simple no mask you don't get on the bus and, and you know this I don't know why this is so difficult in this day and age and when I was a kid and it was a grant that it was the Stone Age but when I was a kid, you were told if you don't do something, you're not going to move on with the rest of us. So, uh, you know, to me, in this situation, um, parents should understand children should be wearing a mask. If the school district tells you that there's a mask required for your child to go on a bus, you should provide a mask for your child. If there's not one, I'm sure the school district will make sure the child does have one. But that memo should be going out again. It makes common sense. I think under the circumstances, I think he does not have many other options at this point because we're seeing too much non-compliance in this particular area. Okay. Um, several people wrote in with concerns about specific businesses where employees or customers were either not wearing their masks or not wearing them properly. Uh, what can be done in a situation like this? Okay, first thing I would urge you to do, <coughs> excuse me, first thing I would urge you to do is speak with the store manager or the owner. Um, they are likely the ones who can take immediate action. And as a general rule, they're going to. And not all the time, I know, I've heard some of the horror stories already. Um, if a local business is not taking action, uh, you can try calling the ownership or corporation if there is one. That's number one. It's a good step. Uh, you could also consider reporting this to local law enforcement. If this is ongoing, uh, they're in the store, you can call the local PD. They should respond. And again, they're not going to run in and handcuff people. That's just not what's going to happen. What they're going to do with the authority to enforce the executive order, they can speak to people and say, look, you have to be wear this mask. This is a governor's executive order. Again, typically most people will comply. Probably the officer, if I was one of the officers responding, I'd probably speak to the store manager and explain to him or her that you should try to monitor people coming into the store. Some of us had seen some stores um, make sure that they, there was a line of people to get in when the store was getting full. That's a good thing. It makes sense. It gives us some, some elbow room and time we were supposed to have that. Um, if the local police respond or do not show up, I would first of all call the local police, ask for a supervisor, find out why they didn't show up. It could be very simply something as the, the radio was busy and they didn't get there. Because a call for a person not having a mask is not going to be a high priority job for law enforcement. As a background, as a law enforcement officer in my past, I could tell you that. So, I mean, uh, that has to be understood. But you, you at least find out the facts and circumstances, whether or not they responded, they should have responded, they didn't do what you thought they should have done. Maybe a supervisor could actually clarify that for you. Um, and then if uh, you, you're not satisfied with the response of a police supervisor, uh, the ultimate authority for the police department, uh, a town police department rests with the town supervisor or town council. Uh, for a village department, it rests with the village mayor and the village board of trustees. That's who your next step would be. Finally, the last resort would be to call the New York State Hotline. If this is something that's going on once in a store, we could be rest assured it's going to probably happen the next day and the next day. So call the New York State Hotline, 833-789-0470, 833-789-0470. They will take your information. They will send the information down to Rockland County. Uh, it will go to our uh, Sheriff's Department. It will go to our District Attorney. And also a copy will be our Commissioner of Health. And they will come up with a plan of response uh, to, to deal with the issue. Um, that's pretty much chapter and verse is what you can do. Absolutely. Um, so we're getting a number of questions in the chat along with, um, just for clarity, can you reiterate what is specifically being done to stop the spread of COVID locally here okay. in Rockland? Okay. Um, first of all, immediately I can tell you, as I said earlier, the governor is arranging for 200 um, the deployment of 200 rapid testing machines to hot spots throughout the state. Clearly, uh, we're going to have uh, some attention given to this, this, these two zip code, these two areas in Rockland County and Muncie and Spring Valley. Uh, increasing testing will help us identify uh, how serious the local situation is while allowing our, co our contact tracer program to warn those who may have been exposed to take pro protective uh, action. We expect to see multiple local health care providers and schools utilize these machines 
which will help our efforts to stop the spread. It will also increase our numbers, as I said earlier, so we have to take that into account. Uh, in prior days, again, we, we have had a conversation with municipal, um, municipal community and religious leaders um, throughout Rockland. I, I do think those conversations will bear fruit. Uh, there are a number of educational pieces going out from town of Ramapo. Um, you have, we, have, um, we have them going out with um, the, the, the um, loudspeakers, loudspeakers uh, going to different communities. Uh, I, they're obviously making visits now to the stores. The health department also, any, com any complaints that they may see or maybe may have heard of, they're sending communications to those stores, advising them that they have to comply another level of oversight. Um, you know, again, now we also are doubling down on making sure that any employee who no whose normal course of duties will bring him or her out of town hall, for example, so i.e. a building inspector, fire inspector, it is going to be expected by that town supervisor that that person would take some time from his or her day to go in and make sure that rules are being followed. Um, and again, as I said earlier, I, I, um, despite my, those who saw TV today know how I feel about the things that were said, uh, but despite my annoyance uh, of this mischaracterization of our local efforts, which I will emphasize is an utter mischaracterization, I will give him credit uh, for the, to the governor for saying today that he will meet with local religious, uh, local religious leaders and local officials too. So I think that's very important. Um, by everyone repeating the same message, by working together, we can limit and further the further spread of COVID and protect our families, our friends, and our neighbors. And that is what this issue is about. Getting the virus is one thing. Spreading it is something quite different. Um, anybody can get sick. It's what you do to prevent from getting sick, and it's what you do after you are sick that you really should be measuring yourself by. So that's very important. So I would just urge all Rocklanders, just do your part. Uh, if you're not feeling well, stay home. Uh, again, practice these common sense things to try to prevent from getting sick. Because if you get sick with this, uh, this is not a cut finger. You can't give somebody else a cut finger by your cut finger. This is a virus that spreads, and we don't want to see that happen. Um, and just to be clear, there have been a number of questions um, about why the county specifically isn't taking more action. And I just want to reiterate right. that the governor's executive orders specifically state who can and cannot enforce exactly. them. We don't have the legal authority to do some of the things uh, that people are commenting that should be done in the chat. So we have to work within right. the laws and regulations that are out there. We can't just do right. anything we want. Here. This, 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 I, had a, I had this question again. We've been very detailed here. I'm asking people, please listen. We cannot engage in illegal activity. Picture a health, a health inspector who has no authority to enforce any of these executive orders, going into a store, confronting someone without a, a, a mask on, for example, and the person without the mask turning around and saying, in a very direct way, go to hell. Or worse, maybe physically con physical confrontation with that inspector. Now, it's bad enough the inspector is not in a position to defend him or herself. They're not law enforcement. They cannot protect themselves. On top of that, they are interjecting in something they are not legally empowered to do. This is just a wrong scenario. This is like a New York City police officer being in Teaneck, New Jersey, seeing a Teaneck, a New Jersey statute being violated that's a violation, that police officer cannot take action in New Jersey. Why? The officer is not authorized to take action in that state. It's, just, it's as simple as that. So I know it's frustrating, I get it, but again, we, we're doing everything we can do legally. We're pushing every envelope and then some to the extent that we, we physically can. We all want to see this stop. Nobody wants this to continue. I'm, I'm looking to get married next year. I want to get married with more than 50 people and all my guests having masks on them. It's just a fact of life. So my, my goddaughter has had three postponed weddings already. So, I mean, you know, look, we're all affected by this in one way or other. My two nephews, uh, my son, and my daughter-in-law had COVID, and they all got through it, thank God. So I feel it, I understand it, I get it. And believe me, nobody else wants this more than, than I do. I want this to stop. I want us to go back to normal. We had wonderful things going on in this county. We, would t we, have turned, we have turned the corner, we're entering 2020, the year we want to forget is gonna be known as, um, and things were looking great. And then this pandemic hit, 
it, it's, it's costing us dearly in, in financially in the cost of lives and sicknesses and, and, and fr frustration and anxiety. In so many ways, this has attacked the very psyche of this community. We have a, a big battle to get back to normalcy again. So we get it, absolutely. And again, every step I can humanly take to move that, to move that ball towards the goal line, I'm going to do. Okay. Um, and we, uh, surprisingly, received what I'll call an off-topic question today, uh, which is something we've been working on behind the scenes right. this week and for the weeks and months leading up to it. Will the 2021 county budget be submitted on October 1st? You're trying to ruin my day, aren't you? It's, the budget has been a challenge. <clears throat> Excuse me, anybody who's been paying attention knows that I'm not going to go into it too deeply. Uh, but yes, the budget will be presented as required um, by, by charter on October 1st, this Thursday. Uh, we'll be probably doing a presentation about 2 p.m. Um, and we'll detail uh, uh, what, we, what we're proposing to be charted out with the budget uh, for the year 2021, and we'll go from there. You can watch, we will have it live in Facebook, so you'll be able to see the presentation. Uh, and um, I guess uh, one thing I do want to offer up before I forget, hang on, we have a note here, um, blood drive. I know, I know some people know that I'm crazed about this, but I believe in this. Um, I know how much, how important this is to have a blood supply, a good blood supply in our community. Um, most people don't give it much of a thought, and I understand that. But when you've worked as a first responder, you see a lot of things that you understand why it's important. Um, when somebody gets on a table and is in crisis, uh, medical crisis, that person could be there a long time and they needed a lot of blood. And I think the last I heard that um, the um, blood drives now have been reduced by 75%. And we, as you probably have heard, there have been plenty of times we've had blood shortages anyway. So just think about how bad it is now. Uh, September 30th at from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, that is tom tomorrow, September 30th, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Building A of the Robert Yeager Health Center in Pomona. Um, you can make appointments. Uh, this is run by the New York Blood Center. If you want to go online uh, with the New York Blood Center to make an appointment, by all means do so. Uh, they won't turn you away, but you'll get there. Uh, you'll, you may spend a little more time there if you are wa a walk-in. So either way, uh, it's a gift of life. I can't make any more clear than that. I give blood every 58 days, I guess it comes out to. Whenever I can give it, I give it. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I just would urge you, please, if you can, um, engage, engage in giving blood. And if uh, tomorrow is too short notice for you, if you go to the New York Blood Center donor portal, right. which uh, we'll put a link to in the comments section, uh, they show other local blood drives right. when they're going yep. on for the next month. So there's plenty of opportunity Plenty of places, mornings, mm -hmm. evenings, they'll find a time when you can come in. And they've, they've asked me if it hurts, and I, I try very hard not to grimace at all. When, no, it, does, it doesn't hurt. It's, it's not, it really is not a big deal. It really isn't. But again, you, you're, you're doing a wonderful thing. You really are. Um, you look, in closing, look, as I said earlier before, I share your concerns. I share your fears, and about, especially about being forced to shut our economy down locally. Um, a lot of friends of mine who have local businesses here, they're our neighbors. Uh, and they really had a tough go of it. And we, we've been doing very well here. Um, again, I, I've been leading that forward in conversations on a regular basis with the governor's office, um, you know, because I said I made it abundantly clear that shutting down our businesses under these circumstances is unacceptable. I will tell you that the response has been moderate. The response to date has been uh, that they are solely focused on the identified cluster in Ramapo, which is really what I want to hear. When there's a generalization, as such as it was earlier today, when we used the word Rockland, when it wasn't Rockland, it was one town scenario. Um, people hear that, and again, they get they react like I did today. Uh, so I want to just reemphasize to you that that thought is fresh in front of my mind right now, and uh, has been expressed with regularity. And I we're not getting any pushback from anybody. I think they understand that we've. We've done a good job here locally in identifying the situation. These numbers, by the way, don't come by magic. They're, we get information from the state, but we developed this information here locally through our planning department in, in cooperation with the health department. This gives us a real good picture of what happens. When I can tell you that we have 19 zip codes with eight or fewer cases, that takes work. There are identified confirmed cases of positive COVID. Uh, some, some zip codes have zero. So, I mean, um, and again, we know what the problem is, and uh, we're we're focused on that. And and again, state government, governor's office, 
State Department of Health, our local Department of Health, local law enforcement, our towns, our villages. We're pulling the oars in the same direction and we're doing everything humanly possible to, to stamp this out now before it gets any worse. And today, at least, we finally broke that skein of, of extremely high uh, pos you know, positive infection rates and getting down to something that may not be the most desirable number of 3.6, but given what we've been hit with the last few days, it felt like I love talking to the right cross one after another. So uh, again, all, we're all working to avoid this uh, getting worse. So I just ask each and every resident, just do their part. There's nothing you can do about other people other than try to you know, shame them maybe if possible or you know, report them when you can. But the, by and large, most people do, um, do um, abide by the regulations and the rules and they are making an honest effort. So I just ask that all you continue doing that. Uh, we're gonna get through this. We've gotten through other things here in Rockland the six years I've had the helm. We will get through this also. So with that, I'll bid you a good afternoon, and uh, we will see you next Tuesday, 4.15, for our next uh, Facebook Live uh, COVID-19 update. Thank you very much.